right. Hello, wine drinking people. Time for more of what I've had to drink yesterday. And man, I just love my job. I love when I get to work. And uh, one of Napa's premier vintners is here to see me first thing in the morning. Nothing better than Cabernet for breakfast. And Freddie Constant has been making this a constant stop on his trip to South Florida for the last several years now. And you know, every time uh, I taste this wine, it just gets better, consistently better and better. This is a wine that uh, is from a small vineyard, the highest, oldest vineyard in Napa Valley. Let me make sure I get that right. There are older vineyards in Napa Valley, and there are higher vineyards. But this one was the highest vineyard planted back in uh, 1895. So very old vineyard site, and uh, this is above the fog line. It's a very unique microclimate, and vintages like 2011, where they had a lot of problems with rain on the valley floor, didn't lose one grape up at Freddie Constant Vineyard. So consistently excellent wines here and uh, Paul Hobbs one of the reasons one of the top winemakers in California is the consultant there now and you know they're right on the dividing line up on top of uh, Diamond Mountain between Napa and Sonoma so on the label it says 50% Napa 50% Sonoma but I don't think anyone's got the measuring tape out there and saying you know how much of the wine came from here or there and you know Freddie is a really cool cat he and his wife, two wonderful people. I'll never forget the dinner we had up there on the property with the late, great Jimmy Mann's back. What a wonderful evening. And, uh, you know, the wines are great. He doesn't only make this one wine. They have a couple other wines. We had a Viognier from them, which they no longer produce. Uh, they make some other things that are sold exclusively on their mailing list. I think he sells 85% of his wine direct, which is what most small wineries should do, especially the guys that only produce 1,500 cases of wine, and they produce it at this quality level with like I said, with a guy like Paul Hobbs name, name involved, you should be able to sell all this at the winery. And we're lucky that Freddie still takes care of his good friends. I keep telling him, Freddie, come on back the next time. We'll open up seven or eight vintages of Constant that I have in my stash. We've got quite a bit of Constant here, something we've been buying constantly since the first release. And uh, th this vintage, the 2008, uh, at the end of its release now, but you know they hold this wine back for a little time. It definitely needs a little time in the bottle. Uh, the great Philippe Melka used to make wine up here, but rumor has it he didn't like to drive all the way up there to see uh, Freddie. I guess Paul considers it, uh, you know, uh, part of his, uh, you know, kind of mental break, taking the drive up there and relaxing on the way up and relaxing on the way down. Because you can't justify the time you spend going up to a vineyard like this. But it is a unique sight. And I'm guessing that because Freddie sells, you know, some of his fruit, that he sells some of it to Paul. I know he said he sells some of it to Philippe, but uh, that's one of the reasons Paul's driving all the way up there because he wants some of this good juice that uh, Freddie's got up there. This wine has got a little bit of Cabernet Franc and a little bit of Merlot in it, 2008. Oh, well, kind of a vintage you kind of have to pick and choose. I don't think it's going to go down in the annals of history as one of the greatest vintages from Napa Valley, but certainly a very good vintage. This is one of the best 2008s that I have had. A really rich wine on the nose, lovely dark earth, kind of dark chocolate, tobacco spice, currant, cassis berry fruit, really lovely concentration on the bouquet. That is something you get from farming the vineyard correctly. And, uh, you know, you have to drop fruit in certain years when you don't get enough rain. You have to do all the things. You have to mind your, your P's and Q's, dot your I's, cross your T's, do all the things you need to do through the course of the year to make a great wine every year. And they do pretty much here at Constant. Uh, you know, we have, I think, eight or nine vintages on the shelf. And it's not because I don't think the wine is fantastic because for $115, I challenge you to find a better wine in a $100 price range than Constant. It's just one of the best wines in Napa, and I can't believe it's still in the $100 price range. Anyways, this wine's got a lovely freshness to the palate. One of the things you also get from that high elevation, lovely red and black currant berry fruit, a host of spice, and a really lovely balance in this wine, even though it is big at 14 and a half or whatever percent alcohol it is. It has lovely freshness and a really long finish, echoing that nuance from the nose all the way to the end. Most excellent juice, Freddie. Once again, I'm your host, Andrew Lampassoni, signing off for the Wine Watch, saying remember, always drink the good stuff first.